Want to learn how to add some flair to your boring website layouts? In the next nine minutes, I'll teach you how to add this animated scroll hijacking effect inside of Framer with just a few clicks. This is the effect that we're trying to recreate. As our user starts to scroll down the site, their normal scroll bar, their normal scroll behavior is happening. But at some point, we're going to hijack that scroll. Notice as I scroll, nothing is happening. And as we hijack that scroll and continue to do so, it's gonna start animating through the different variations of this component that we have set until eventually it's going to release that scroll hijacking functionality and go back to the browser's normal scroll behavior. And so this is a really smooth interaction you can do in both directions. Let's go ahead and recreate this right now. You can see that in our finished file, we have one element here that has our component, a bunch of space, and this, it looks really, really weird. This looks really different than our starting file where we have all three of these sections stacked on top of each other. When we play our starting file, it looks cool. We can scroll through these just like that, but we're not getting that cool interaction. The first thing you need to do to make this happen, obviously, is to have a component that has the variance that you wanna cycle through. I have my variance here already placed on the screen. What I'm going to do is just delete the extra sections here. And what I'm left with is I have a section called scroll hijack. I have a section called sticky stack that has a title. And then it has that grouping, that stack with my left and my left copy and my image element sitting on top of it. This section is going to become dynamic. We're going to do that a little bit later. But for now, let's work on making this section actually stick in place. If you want to follow along with this tutorial, you can grab the remix link to this framer project by becoming a design champ for absolutely free. The link is down in the description. That's designchamps.io. There you can sign up to become a design champ for free and get access to this remix link, as well as tons of other Figma files, design templates, join the community, post your work, get feedback, and grow as a designer. If you want to become a design champ for free, hit that link down in the description. We'll see you inside. The first thing you got to do is we need to come into our actual sticky stack. That's why I've labeled it that way. We just need to change the position from relative to sticky and then it's going to give some sort of offset here it could be 20 pixels 40 60 80 i think 160 is going to work well for us and you'll notice we get this little sticky positioning warning it says please note it's not going to work unless all the parent layers have overflow set to visible this is imperative to do if you don't do this then your sticky behavior is not going to work and you're going to be super frustrated so let's jump in now we're on our sticky stack not that one that one in question actually has to be overflow set to hidden but all all of the parent containers, like this scroll hijack is a parent of our sticky stack where our sticky behavior is going to work. Also, the entire desktop canvas is also a parent container. So we need to grab this, we need to scroll down, and we need to set overflow hidden and change that to visible. Hidden is the default behavior, so we're going to have to switch it on both. Hidden goes to visible. Now with that, you're going to press preview and you're still not going to get any sticky behavior because there's no space for it to stick and things to scroll up and underneath it. So let's go ahead and accomplish that right now. What we need to do is get inside of our scroll hijack right there. Hit F for frame. Let's draw some frames inside. You can see it's drawn my frame right there. Why don't we make that height of it a little bit taller and we'll set it to fill from left to right. Why don't we put this frame down at the bottom? So now we have our sticky stack and we have our frame. Well, let's name that frame something like gap one because it is in fact acting like a gap for us. And let's set the height of it to be something kind of substantial, maybe 700 pixels of fixed height. Now we can grab that gap that we've created. You can see it's got that standard blue fill. We'll take that away in a second, but we want to go ahead and duplicate that two times. I'm going to take that and just rename those to be gap one, and we'll call this gap two, gap three, and now we have all of those. Let's grab each one of those, and we'll remove the fill, and now it's this invisible or kind of blank section. Now when we hit preview of our design, you can see that it sticks. It's successfully sticking, and as we scroll, it's going to get all the way through those 700 pixel tall sections before it releases and so you're kind of judging the timing how long do you want your scroll hijack to last 
That depends on how long you make that blank section underneath. The shorter the section, the faster the hijack. The longer the section, the longer the hijack is going to take place. We've set those to be pretty long because we're gonna be doing some animation in between. So now with that set, we can move on and do the scroll variant animation. To create these scroll variants, all we have to do is grab our component and you'll see that when we do that, we can add an effect and we get this option for scroll variant. That only becomes active when we're working with, you guessed it, a variant. If I just pick a normal piece of text that's not a variant, that's gonna be grayed out for us. So why don't we grab these both really quickly and add that effect of a scroll variant. I'm gonna work on just this first one and you'll see how easy this is to actually set up. I go to my scroll variant effect, let's scroll in, and we have a couple options here. For our trigger, it could be on scroll, layer in view, or section in view. We don't wanna target the actual layer itself, we wanna target a different section. So let's grab section in view, let's set it to be something like the bottom. Do we want this to replay in both directions? Yes, we do. What section do we want? Notice that we don't have any sections available to us. That's because we haven't set up any scroll sections. So let's zoom out, jump back in, and you'll notice that we have these gaps set up, but they don't have a scroll section that can be identified. So what we're gonna do is come over after we select it. And in the right hand panel, you can see we have a section called scroll section. We're just going to turn that on and let's call that gap one. We're going to do the same thing to the other two. We're going to add a scroll section and then individually we're going to give them their name. So this one's going to be gap two and this one is going to be gap three. I like to match the names of the layers with the name of the scroll section. It makes it really, really easy to remember. That way when I'm seeing it over here in my layers panel, it just makes a ton of sense to me. So with that being said, I can go back to my variant animation, click on that, and now when I zoom in on the section, I have those sections available to me. So this is gonna say, hey, when section one is in view, this means it's at the bottom of the browser, just coming up. You can set that to the middle and delay it a little bit more, that's fine. What do we want to do? We wanna set this to variant desktop one. And then we're gonna do this two more times so we can set a section for, you guessed it, gap two, we're gonna go Variant number two, gap three, we wanna send that to variant number three. Let's press preview on our website and you'll see now as we scroll through, we get a static image and we're scrolling through the text back and forth. That might be the effect that you're looking for. But us, we wanna do the same thing with our other element, not layer in view, section in view when it hits the bottom. And then we want to set gap one to desktop one, add another section, gap two, desktop two, one more section, gap three to desktop three. Let's zoom out and preview our design. And just like that, it's gonna lock in place. It's gonna start to scroll through those variant animations until it releases. Now again, you can adjust the speed of your scroll or your scroll hijack by changing the height of those sections. So for instance, maybe I want my first section to actually move a little bit quicker. I could actually take gap one and actually reduce the size of it. Let's go ahead and press play. You'll see that gap one, it happens a lot faster. There's a lot more scrolling that has to take place for these other ones versus number one is gonna move very, very quickly. Animation is a hard thing to define or describe without talking about how it feels. And so you can adjust how quick the animation feels by adjusting the height of those gaps. Well, there you have it. Simple scroll hijacking animation inside a framer in less than nine minutes. What do you think? Are you gonna use this on your next website project? Let me know down in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you know when more videos like this one come out. Hope you're having an amazing week. Hope you're designing amazing things, making amazing things. We'll see you in the next one.